Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you guys. Great to have you guys here. It's a new setting. It's outside. I'm loving it. <laughs> I hope you can come next week and love it with us. So nice outside. Um, but I just want to let you guys know that we're here for you guys. We're, there's a lot of tribulations happening right now, and we just want to lift that up as we worship, as we pray uh, to the Lord. This is important. Worship is so essential. It gets us in the mood, gets us spiritually ready to hear God's word, to hear his message. So I pray that you worship with us, you pour it out, you, um, you, you know the hearts of the many who are, who are suffering in our church, and just lift those up uh, along with your own as we worship to the Lord today. But please join us. Please stand up at your home. Please stand up outside with me for this first song uh, before we pray. Um, but I'll start praying, and then we'll worship and just love the Lord. Um, thank you, Father God, for just allowing us to just have breath in our lungs, Lord. Allowing, allowing us to pray, Lord. Allowing us to just wake up in the morning, God. Giving us strength, Lord, to pray for one another, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us family, for giving us his church, Lord. For giving us love, Lord. Um, just pray for those who are suffering, God. Uh, we love you so much, Lord, and be with us, God, during this time, Lord, this hurting time, God. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. May you all please stand.
and just, I want to remind you guys just to worship, to pray. This is the time to lay it all at his feet. Um, you may be seated, if you like, for this second song.
Again, just lay it at his feet. We're hurting. Our church is hurting. We need your prayers. We need your love, your voices.
please come forward. Thank you, God, for just bringing us together, Lord. My heart is just this morning, God, and I just pray that you hear the cry, Lord, of our church, Lord. We're hurting, God, and I just, we lift it up to you, Lord, for our brother, Kevin, Lord. We miss him, God, but we know he's home. We know he's with you, Lord. And that's, that's our end destination. That's where we're all heading, God. Help us, Lord. Remind us, God, that we still have work to do here, Lord, that it's not done. That's why we're not home yet, Lord. We still have a purpose. We still have a mission for us, God, and just help us, encourage us, God, during this time, Lord. Give Diane strength, her family strength, Lord. Be with us, Lord. Accept our offering, God. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name, amen.
chorus one more time. Because God just wants to hear us. Are you Let's do it together. It's your breath and our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath and our lungs. So we pour out Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. And uh, let's go ahead and read from Psalm 47. Psalm 47. Psalm 47. Shall we all read this together? You need a minute? Psalm number 47, the first nine verses, that's all we have, and we are going to read it. Let's read. Oh, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us, and the nations under our feet. Verse 4. He will choose our inheritance for us, the excellence of Jacob whom he loves. Verse 5. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth, sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together, the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you. And Lord Jesus, we praise you for today. We thank you for the privilege to gather in your name, to lift your name high as a group of believers. Lord, I thank you for all those who gathered in this, uh, in this manner, Father. What a beautiful day it is to come together and worship you, Father, outside with the beautiful atmosphere. And I thank you, Father, for all those who are here. Bless them. Thank you for all those who are watching from home. Bless them. Keep them safe. 
Continue to encourage them, give them hope and peace. Heavenly Father, we are here to lift your name high. This morning, Lord, we want to hear from your word, so speak to our hearts. We pray that you give us what we need to hear today. Bless our children and their ministry, Father. I pray that it would be meaningful to them. We pray for all the children who will be watching from home and Zoom. I pray that they will have a great study today. Thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you for what you're going to teach us today. Bless us all together. We thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you for all those who are in our midst once again. We pray for those who are weary and tired and sick. We pray for healing. We pray for comfort. We pray for encouragement. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray for Sister Diane. May your Holy Spirit continue to give her peace and strength and during this time and her children and grandchildren all the relatives and friends and church members, we commit all of us into your hands. Comfort us, encourage us. I pray that, uh, that your, your presence would really bless us, Lord, and encourage us. Thank you, Father, for all that you are going to do for us today. Father, we pray that you be glorified. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the songs of praise. Thank you for the servants of God who are able to lead us in worship. Bless them, Father. And we thank you for what you're going to accomplish this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Quick announcements. Uh, Thursday Bible study from the book of Revelation. So encouraging you to come and join us. And, um, and, and Thursday we, not, we don't have enough people, which is okay. Most of them are watching online. Uh, we are connected in the spirit of the Lord. And that is more important. So... Encouraging everyone to set time apart if you're watching uh, from home um, at uh, 7 p.m. Um, Book of Revelation chapter 12. Friday we have the youth Bible study. So please keep them in prayer that uh, they will have a blessed time as well. I think that's all we have announcement for this morning. And uh, this morning um, Pastor Ashish Matthew is going to give us the word. So I encourage him to come and give us what the Lord has laid in his heart. And the title is God of All Possibilities. So let's give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, very especially all our dear ones, those who are watching us online, may the good Lord bless each one of us together as we sit in the presence of the Lord. If you have your Bible with you, please turn to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 26. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 26. I'm reading this portion in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this impossible, but with God all things are possible. Shall we look into the Lord in prayer, please? Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we come into your presence this day, this morning. We look into your face, Lord. Even though we're, we have a lot of problems, we have a lot of issues, we have a lot of troubles around us, but we know that our God is there. When we face with impossibilities in our life, our God is there to make things possible for us. We love you, Jesus, for who you are and what you have done for us. The precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have you ever find you are still facing an impossible situation in your life. It can be your, a relationship. It can be a health problem. It can be a financial difficulty. It can be the new job that you're finding. Any other matter, an impossible situation in your personal life. Bible says what is impossible to man is possible with God. In this context, as we read in Matthew's, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, the context is like this. Someone who is trusting in his riches, not in God. 
So here Lord is saying that you cannot save yourself by trusting in your riches. That is impossible. According to the scriptures, trusting in riches is not only the impossible thing that is keeping you away from the Lord, but that something which keeping you away from the Lord is that we are not having faith in the Lord. So then we will not be able to come very close to the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 Bible says, And without faith it is impossible to please God. So we need to have faith in our life to please the Lord and to, have, and to put our trust in the Lord. If you are putting our trust in the riches, that is very dangerous because that is temporary. Here the context as we study, the Jewish people of those days, they had a kind of prosperity theology which make them always away from the Lord. So here Jesus is saying that you need to be trusting in the Lord, not on your riches. If you're trusting in the Lord, you cannot please the Lord. You cannot come very near to God. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9, Bible says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself, it is the gift of God. So the very salvation that we enjoy in our personal life is perfectly the gift of the Lord. This is not by our effort that you are sitting here in the church today because this is the gift of the Lord. Many of us are watching online because this is the gift of the Lord. We are not having salvation because we are having the ability of believing in Jesus Christ. We are having salvation not because I, born, I am born in a Christian family. I have salvation is not because I am qualified to believe in Jesus Christ. It is not in that way. Even the very belief that you have in your life is given by the Holy Spirit. Unless Holy Spirit is not energizing you to believe in Jesus, you cannot even believe in Jesus Christ. So when you make a decision of believing in Jesus Christ, remember, Holy Spirit made you to believe in Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit put that, that power in your heart so that you are able to respond to the gospel. You might have accepted Jesus Christ when you listen to a sermon. Maybe when you listen to a testimony. While maybe while you are listening to a song. Maybe while you, somebody was sharing the gospel with you personally. For some, reason, some way or other way, you, lis you listen to the gospel. And you are able to believe that because Holy Spirit was working in your heart. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot earn our salvation. That is not possible. Many other religions teach in that way. That you do something and then you get salvation. That was the problem with the Jewish community. You do something good to your neighbor. You do something good to your, your friend. Then you can earn salvation. That was the kind of teaching that was coming into their society and to their culture. So Jesus, was Christ, Jesus Christ was telling them, maybe this is impossible with man, but this is possible with God. There are so many impossible things in our, in our life. Maybe touching nose with your tongue is impossible. Maybe some can do that, but I cannot do it. That is impossible for me. I don't know about you. And maybe eating a spoonful of uh, cinnamon powder. I don't know how many of you can do that. Maybe you can add cinnamon, a little bit of cinnamon in your coffee. But uh, can you eat a spoonful of cinnamon? That's impossible. Maybe eating one jalapeno, just like that. <laughs> Maybe if there's a challenge, somebody can do that. The most spices, chips in the world. I think my, some of you might have seen the video. And lick your elbow. Can you lick your elbow? Have you ever tried that? <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> Some are trying it. <laughs> it's a good exercise for you. <laughs> and uh, sneezing with open eye. Can you do that? <laughs> Those are impossible things. We think that we can do everything. I am a smart guy. <laughs> I can do so many things, but there are so many simple things we cannot do in our life. At the same time, there are so many impossible things which was yesterday, but today it is possible. Like 100 years before somebody flying on an airplane. <laughs> that was impossible. Or taking a picture or video in a cell phone. That was impossible for many years before. I still remember having the first cell phone. When it came to the market, it was bigger than the TV remote controller. 
I hope many of you have used that, you know. With that cell phone, you could not even take a uh, picture. You cannot make a video. You never had a touch screen. You had a keypad, and even one key was having more than two or three letters. Then when you wanted to send a message to somebody, you need to type many times. You know, you have to press many times. But now we have changed. Those things are possible now. Something which was impossible yesterday is possible today. The same way there are some spiritual impossibilities in our life. Spiritual impossibilities. What are the spiritual impossibilities? Earning your own salvation is spiritually impossible. You cannot earn your salvation. That is the gift of the Lord. And having a sinless life. If you say that I have no sin, I am the holiest person in the world, you are making the Lord a liar according to the Bible. So having a sinless life is impossible. We are living in this world. We may sin, so we have a God, we have an advocate with us who is able to cleanse us daily. That is known as the daily cleansing. So we need that to live in this world as a Christian. So there are spiritual impossibilities in life. But with God, all things are possible because God created everything out of nothing. Bible says, God created everything out of nothing. So everything is possible with the Lord. As we look into the book of Revelation, we study in this way one day, the Lord, or maybe in the near future, God is going to split the sky open and he is going to come down. And he is going to come down and that is known as the second coming of the Lord. When we tell this one to people, they will say that this is impossible. That is not possible. Now look at the sky and see that Jesus Christ is coming down from the sky in a horse. <laughs> maybe they will tell you that you are gone crazy. Why are you wasting time preaching all these kind of things? But according to the Bible, that is possible with the Lord and he is going to come down very soon for us. The present situations in the world says that he is at the door. He is so near to us. Prepare yourself to meet the Lord. Prepare yourself to meet the Lord is not an invitation for worship, but that is a warning of the coming of the Lord. He is very near. Are you ready? Are you prepared yourself to meet the Lord? When you read the Gospels, we read about a young girl known as Mary. Bible says a virgin became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Impossible according to the medical science and according to our understanding and according to our knowledge. But that is possible with the Lord. A virgin become pregnant and gave birth to a son and Jesus born into this world. Again, there are so many other miracles that we read and we understand from the Gospels. Impossible for us, but it is possible with God. You, we read about Lazarus. Died after three days. Jesus Christ went to the tomb and called him back to life. That is amazing and is impossible with man, but it is possible with God. So God is a great God who is with us, give us the power, power of resurrection, and we will be able to face the impossible situations and God will make us those impossible situations possible for us so then we will remain faithful to the Lord. I believe we all have experienced such situations in our personal lives. A sickness that seems impossible to be healed. A financial difficulty that seems impossible to me. A relationship problem that, Im that, seems, to be, that seems to be not able to fix. A new job that is impossible. No one is there to recommend. There is no one is there to help me. But let me tell you that is possible with God. Why do you call impossible? Because we, we don't believe in God fully. We still have some doubts in our heart. Trust in the Lord. Believe in Him. And then He will make things possible. But again, remember this. He will make things possible according to His will and according to His understanding. Many times we are unable to grow into the standard of God and we think that let God may do something possible for me according to my wish. We have a limited understanding we have a limited capacity to think with our little brain. And God works beyond that. 
So we have to leave ourselves into the hand of the Lord so that God's will may take place in my life. God's desire may take place in my life. Not my desire. It's not my will. It's not my understanding. It's not my thinking. But it is all about my Lord, my Jesus, and my Savior. Leave yourself into the hand of the Lord. Let him do for us. There is no prayer that he cannot answer. There is no prayer that he cannot answer. Ask God and he will do it, Bible says. Nothing is too difficult for the Lord. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. We believe in that great God. Gospel of Matthew chapter 9 verse 23 Bible says. Gospel of Matthew chapter 9 verse 23 Bible says. If you can believe all things are possible to him that believes. If you can believe that all things are possible with him. Then he will make it happen for you. The moment you start doubting the Lord. God cannot act for you. Mark gospel chapter 11 verse 24. The gospel of Mark. Chapter 11, verse 24, Bible says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. When you start praying for something, believe that God has given you that blessing already in your hand. Then you pray. There God is going to answer your prayers. When you have a problem that you are facing, it can be a relationship problem, it can be financial, it can be a social problem, it can be a problem in your workplace, whatever it may be. We pray because you heard pastors preaching saying that pray God is going to answer you and you have that faith although and then you start praying. As soon as you say amen to your prayer and then you, begin, you started worrying about the same problem that you have been facing, then what kind of faith that you have in Jesus Christ? Which means you have doubts in your hearts again. And you are not fully believing in Jesus Christ that he is going to take care of my problem. I heard someone praying, like, uh, someone saying like this, I prayed but God did not answer me. What kind of faith we have if we make that kind of statement? Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 Bible says, Call unto me, I will answer you. God never says, I may answer you. Let me think if I had to answer you. No, he never says that. He says, I will answer you. But only one thing that he is expecting from us, call him. Call him at any time and he is ready to answer you. God never says that you have to call me on specific times. Then only I can answer you. You don't have to take any prior appointments to talk to the Lord. Call him at any time. Any moment, any second, and he is ready to answer you. Even if you wanted to meet your best friend, you need to ask your friend, can I come and meet you? I had to take a permission. That is the problem with the hum human beings, you know. Even if you are sitting at home doing nothing, but still then we will tell our friend that actually I'm busy now. Can you call me after 10 minutes or after 15 minutes? No, maybe we are trying to tell our friends that actually I'm busy, but actually we are not doing anything. That is the mentality of human being. But God is not that way. He is ready to listen to you. But are you ready to call him? Will you call him? Then he is ready to answer you. What kind of answer that we expect when you call the Lord? What kind of answer that you need when you call the Lord? We always need S yes from the Lord. We don't want to listen no from the Lord. And we don't want to listen wait from the Lord. Sometimes it is wait. Maybe the sickness that you are passing through right now. Maybe God wants you to go through that problem. God is allowing that problem to you so that you will be able to trust him more and more. Daily walking closer with the Lord. Someday God will just lie that he will answer your prayer. That is the wish of the Lord. That is the desire of the Lord. Maybe sometime God will say no to you. Whatever it may be, we are going to depend on the Lord walking according to his will and according to his desire. Many times when we pray, our desire is that, see, this is the list of all the prayer requests that I have. And this is the kind of answer that I'm expecting from the Lord. And Lord, will you please sign and give back the paper? <laughs> that is the problem with us. We think that God is acting the way we want God to act. God is under my command. I heard even people saying, that, Lord, right now you answer me. Are you, how can we command the Lord right now? Is something like 
he is so uh, um, subordinate to me and then whatever I command is there to give me. Something like you have, you need some money and you think that the Lord is working like an ATM mission. Whenever you need money, you swipe your card and you get money. That is not the way God is not go going to work. Sometimes God will allow you to pass through that particular financial situation to teach you something. Maybe teach you how to manage money. Teach you how to handle the money. Teach you how, mu how much you must be trustworthy handling the money. Sometimes God will allow you to go through some problems so that you will be able to know how much you must be patient in the Lord. Maybe God wants to teach you some patience, which we do not have many times. We need an answer, instant answer, just like instant coffee and instant noodles. Many times we think that God has to work in that way. God is not going to work in that way. God is not under our command. We are under his command. So trust in the Lord, pray unto him, call him at any time, and he's ready to answer you, but do not expect an answer according to your desire. God is going to answer according to your wish and according to his desire. And number two, there is no problem that he cannot solve. You may have uncountable problems in your life. Millions of problems in the life. You may think that you, ha you are the one carrying the biggest problem in the world. Maybe that is true. You are carrying the biggest problem in the world. It can be sickness or sadness or struggle, trials and tribulations and difficulties and what not. All kind of issues. Discouragement. Bring it to the Lord. <laughs> That's the only thing we can do it. Bring it to the Lord. There is a beautiful hymn, it goes in this way. What a friend we have in Jesus. Maybe your brothers knows those songs. And tell him all our trials and temptation. And he is there to take care of all the problems that you are going through. You talk to your friend, your, the greatest problem that you are facing. What your friend is going to tell you. Even your church members. Maybe some of you might have shared your problem with some of your church members. What they will tell you. We will pray for you. That's... That's all the responsibility the person who listened the problem can do. Nothing more. That prayer works. But God is not that way. He will give you an answer. Give, he will give you a solution to your problem. Tell him. Tell him and he will take care of you. Tell him he will fix your problem. Tell him he will make you to go through the problem but able to come out as a victorious person person. Jesus says, you have tribulations in the world, but I have overcome the tribulations, which means we have a God who have overcome it, so he will help us to overcome the tribulations. Jesus never says, you follow me, then I am going to do some great things in your life. You follow me, then you are going to be the most richest person in the world. He never says that. He never says that the life is going to be so smooth. But only one thing that God guaranteed, your takeoff and landing will be guaranteed. <laughs> In between, you need to trust the Lord more and more. There can be turbulence a lot of time. A lot of, lot of air pockets will be here and there. You will be going up and down. You will be going up and down many times. But let me tell you, he will make you to land your life properly. You will be able to have a good takeoff because you trust in the Lord. And he is taking care of you. Some of our dear brothers and sisters met with accident. <laughs> the next Sunday they were in the church. If you look at the car, they, they may not even come to the, supposed not to be in the church. But they were safe in the hand of the Lord. That is the protection God is going to provide. God never says that because you are my son, you are my daughter, even if you drive in the freeway or any way, no attack is going to happen to you because you are taken care fully. No, it's not the way. If our president is going through this, this, door, this road, you, just, you, you imagine that he is going the way that we are driving on the road? No. When he travels on this road, he will have a lot of security in front of him or behind him. And there are so many people to take care of him. Because he is the president. He needs such kind of protection. We are traveling this road and many other roads in America. Who is taking care of us? <laughs> but according to the Bible, innumerable companies of angels are taking control of your life. Your car, your house, when you walk around in the street, 
there are angels taking care of you because God charged them to take care of you. God command them to go and take care of you. So they are always surrounded by you. That's the reason when you met with the even accidents or when you met with the most serious problems in the life, you come out so successfully. You have no issues at all. Because God is the one who takes care of us all the time. There is no promise that he cannot keep. We know that people make a lot of promises and they break all the time the promises. When a man and woman, when they are ready to get married each other, they will, they will give the promises each other that I will take care of you, take care of me. I will love you and you love me. You know, I kiss you, you kiss me. I hug you, you hug me. You know, all kind of promises they will make. And after having two or three children, then this promise has started slowly going back and back. And there is not much kissing, not much hugging, and not much loving, not much smiling, you know, because both are busy, too much busy with so many things. Where is the promises that you made? What happened to your promises? See, this is the life of human beings. That's the way we are. We cannot keep all these things. Maybe you, have, you might have experienced that or some of you are going through that kind of experiences in life. And at the same time, we have broken the promises many times. But Jesus says, I will keep all the promises. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and in glory in Christ Jesus. He will do all the things that I need in my personal life. We know that to maintain our personal life, how much time and how much money we have to spend. Lots of money and lots of time we need to spend to maintain our life. Now who is supplying all these things? Is because I'm so healthy, so smart, I can do all these things. No, that's not the way it works. God is the one supplying all the needs according to his riches and according to his glory. And when God starts doing something, he will do according to his standard. He will do according to his status. Don't think that God is going to work in your status or in my status because my status is very low. My experiences are very poor. So God is going to do something according to his status and according to his standard so that I had to expect something greater than what I am presently experiencing in my personal life. There are so many Bible verses that I can show you how God is keeping his promises to his believers. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. Bible says the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises like some people are. God is not slow in keeping his promises. When he says yes, then it is yes. He will never change it. We know that people will tell you, I will help you. They never help. I will pray for you. They will never pray. I am going to come with you. They never come with you. I will take care of you, they will never take care of you. I love you, they never love you. So this is the attitude of the people. But God is not in that way. He says, I love you so much. Bible says, for God so loved the world. And that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in the name of Jesus Christ shall be receiving an eternal life which is not perishable. Because of the great love of God, he was even ready to forsake his son for a while because he loves us so much. Bible says that he loves us first. That's the reason we are able to attract it to Jesus Christ. That attraction has to come from Jesus Christ. We cannot take a step of start believing in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has to come to us first saying that, Lord, Son, I love you. Are you ready to respond to that great voice of the Lord? He always keep the promises. He never break his promises. At the same time, there is no person that he cannot save. That is possible with the Lord. The desire of God is that all need to be saved. All need to accept Jesus Christ. There was an ungodly, wicked murderer in the Bible. We call him Saul. And then later on, his name was changed to Paul. He was killing the Christians. He got 
a license to kill the Christians. No one is going to ask him why you are killing that person. He can simply say that because he is a Christian. He is reading the Bible, so I am killing him. That was a kind of attitude and that was kind of lifestyle this person was having. But when we read Acts chapter 9, Jesus Christ arrested him. <laughs> Jesus Christ told him, guy, you stand there. I want to talk to you now. What are you doing now? Why are you persecuting me? There he changed his life. If God can save Saul and become, make him Apostle Paul, Jesus can save you. Jesus can save anyone in the world. Jesus can save anyone in the world. Maybe some of you have been praying for some of your family members. Maybe some of you are praying for your husband or your wife or your fa father or mother, your children for their salvation. Let me tell you, continue to pray for them. God will change their heart. God will attract them to his saving knowledge and they will believe in Jesus Christ and turn their life to Jesus Christ. They will repent from their sin and come to Jesus Christ. That is going to happen. Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our race or religion or nationality or political party or sexuality, nothing matters. God can save a person. According to the understanding of the Bible, God can save the homosexuals. He can save a transgender. He can save a transsexual. It doesn't matter whoever you are. Maybe if you don't like the way you born into this world, you can born again. Come into the presence of the Lord. Maybe some of you, some of the people say, I heard people saying that I don't like the way I born into this world. Let me tell you, you can born again. Jesus can make you a new person according to the Bible. When a person believes in Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, he will become a new creation. That new creation will have a life starting with Jesus Christ. Then you are not alone. Jesus is walking with you. Jesus is always taking care of you. He is holding your hand and saying that, son, oh my daughter, you are not alone. I am going to be with you till the end of the world. Jesus promised. Our God can save a wife beater. He can f save a cheater. We, he can save a fornicator. He can save an adulterous person, a prostitute, a prawn star, whoever it may be. We have all these evidences in the Bible. While Jesus was sitting with the tax collectors and sinners, the Pharisees was questioning his um, disciples. Why your teacher is sitting with the tax collectors and sinners? I believe those Pharisees were worse than the sinners and the tax collectors. So Jesus was not upset with all those kind of questions because Jesus knows that he came even for those Pharisees, for their salvation. Not only for the tax collectors and not only for the adulterers, but Jesus came for even for those Pharisees thinking that they are self-righteous. Jesus loved them. Jesus was showing his compassion to them. And when a person accepts Jesus Christ, when he has this new life in Jesus Christ, then what happens? He will tell others that this is what I enjoy in my life. I believe in Jesus. I experience this great joy. I experience this eternal peace within, within me. So I'm sharing this gospel with you. That is the work of an evangelist and every believer has to do that. When you read Matthew, Ma, the gospel of Matthew chapter 9, we read about Matthew the tax collector. Matthew the tax collector, when Jesus told him, follow me, and immediately he started following. According to Luke, he left everything, he started following Jesus Christ. But something which really touched me, that night, Matthew's house, there was a big party. He called all the tax collectors. His friends, those who are working maybe in different cities and different counties. He said, see, I have this experience. Something is happening with me, guys. Come to my house, we'll have a party. There is somebody here known as Jesus Christ and his disciples, his friends are here. We are going to have some, some, some party here. Why can't you come over? And they all came. So while Jesus sat with them and started talking with them, the Pharisees were not so happy with that. They started saying that, you see, your, your, your teacher is speaking with the sinners and the, uh, the tax collectors because tax collectors were not so good people in the society. They were considered as bad people in the society because they are rude. They are aggressive. They always 
they always loot your money so people don't appreciate them people don't like to have any association with them but jesus christ came to die even for those people so jesus was sitting with them and explaining to them about eternal life and i believe very perfectly that that night all those tax collectors might have believed in jesus christ because they are listening the words from jesus christ who can reject that when a pastor preach gospel or when a brother share gospel with somebody you can reject all the time but when you listen gospel the life of eternity from jesus christ personally from his face no one can reject him <laughs> because of the compassion because of the godliness in him no one can do that i believe all those tax collectors and all the sinners those who are there i believe they all might have believe in jesus christ turn their life to jesus christ what a glorious god that we believe that who is able to listen to us all the time and who is able to save anyone who call into the name of the lord and there is no mountain that he cannot move gospel of matthew chapter 17 verse 20 bible says if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed you shall say unto this mountain move and it will move what is the mountain in front of you today it can be the biggest problem that you face in your life maybe a financial difficulty maybe a pain that you are going through maybe a physical condition that you are today let me tell you a happy news god is in the business of moving the mountains tell him god this is a mountain in front of me what will you able to move this mountain for me because i am unable to move this mountain in front of me once an old mother went to the church and she heard pastor preaching in this way if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed you shall say unto this mountain move it will move so she came back home because she lives the other side of the mountain so if she want to come to the church she has to take a long journey to come to the church so she came back to the home so this bible verse really touch her heart so she started kneeling down and start praying lord there is a mountain in front of my house if you can remove this i can go to the church directly i don't have to walk around <laughs> she start praying for half an hour one hour then slowly she will open the eyes and see oh still the mountain is there she start praying again after some time she opened the eyes still the mountain is there in the evening she wake up came outside still the mountain so big in front of her she started saying i know this is not going to happen pastors are saying all these kind of things but it's not going to happen <laughs> when you read the bible you must know the heart of the bible we must know the heart of god then you will understand what is written there it is not talking about a physical mountain it is talking about the biggest problem that you face in your life god is ready to remove it if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed will you pray to the lord will you ask him lord can you please but sometime god will tell you it's good to have a mountain for you my dear sister brother it's good to have this mountain let me see how much you are going to trust me how much you are going to how much you are going to have a walk a close with me the more you pray the more you ask him he will make sure that you are having a strong faith in the lord you are so close to the lord bible says when you draw near to god and he will draw near to you and when you and jesus come to a point that you met together and there is nothing that in this world can separate your love from jesus christ then he will remove your mountain in front of you when you have doubt in your heart thinking that god cannot do this to me and then why i have to face all this problem why they are not facing this problem why i have to face this problem why i have to go through this trouble why i have financial difficulty why i lost my job why i cannot get a new job you know when you have all these kind of questions when you come to the lord god cannot answer you because you are not giving a chance for god to speak to you because you are keep on complaining to the lord will you please stop and listen to the lord listen to the lord and then there god is going to answer you there god is going to respond to your prayer sometime the storm will be so strong wind will be so strong he is ready to calm the wind we know that jesus christ was walking on the water to reach to his disciples and he started commanding the waves 
and the and the storm to calm down and they obey him any kind of storm or waves in your personal life god can calm down if you trust in the lord sometime a tsunami may hit your family unexpected tsunami will come and hit your family it can wipe away the family the peace of the family life it can wipe away the financial situations of the family but let me tell you he is a god who created everything tell him lord this is what happening now and i need you lord because we don't have any other people to go and ask for help we cannot go to any other uh, place to ask for help only god can take care of us come close to the lord and he will take care of us bible says the battle is the lord's the battle is not ours he will fight for us he is our champion he is our captain why are we afraid because we are always in the winning side if god is for us who can be against us nothing of this world can stand against us he will answer your prayer he will calm the storm and he will move the mountains with men impossible but with god it's possible if god is not on your side today ask him lord i am ready now come to my side and i need you my lord bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and if you call him and he will save your life and he will take care of you will you able to respond to him he is calling you today he is loving you today and he will continue to take care of you he will continue to love you he will never forsake you never leave you bible says till the end of the world i am going to take care of you so he is there for us and he will take care of us and he will be always our great friend who is ready to listen to us and who is ready to help us call him at any time may the good lord bless us through the listening of the word of the lord now our brothers will come forward and they will sing an altar call song for us so if this message in any way if this message have conveyed a message to you and if god spoke to you today i am happy to pray for you if you think that god has spoke to you i am happy to pray for you if you want us to pray together will you please raise your hand so that i will pray for you thank you i saw those hands yes. thank you thank you god bless you god bless you may i request our brothers will you please um, sing an altar call song so that's the time you can prepare yourself and after this song i will pray and then they will sing another song and conclude our service for today thank you very much for coming to the church may the good lord bless us together so as they sing this song please prepare your heart and ask god to help you and ask god to work in your personal life so that you will be able to have a great life with jesus christ may the good lord bless us together
Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we come into your presence this day. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful time that you have given us to worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this great atmosphere that you have provided. Lord, you are so wonderful, so great to us, Lord. Lord, there are many things that is impossible for us, but we know that our God will make everything possible for us. Lord, especially all the believers, those who are listening to us right now and even through the Facebook live streaming. God, bless them, Lord, wherever they are. Lord, some of them have raised their hands to pray for them, Lord. I, Lord, I pray for them, Lord. I pray for everyone who are in this church, Lord. Bless them together, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because some of our dear ones have been passing through a lot of pain, a lot of struggles. They are going through a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations, but we know that our God who will overcome everything is able to take care of us. A God who is going to take care of all the problems that we are facing. Because our God is a God of impossibilities. So we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for making things possible for us. When we were confused, Lord, you were there, to, there for us. While we are looking for an answer for our prayers, Lord, you have provided. When we face with un, uh, 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 unimaginable situations in life, God, you are there for us. So we love you, Jesus. We continue to believe in you, Lord. We continue to follow you, Lord. Help us, Lord. Teach us from your word. Help us to, help us to look unto you, Lord, from where our help come from. Our help come from the Lord who created heavens and the earth. Thank you, Lord, for making us so wonderful today to come into the church to have this great time of worshiping, Lord. Yes. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this time. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Can you please stand with us to this last song? Again, let's just lift it all to him.
take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it. God, just go before our worship, Lord. Go before our praise, Lord. As we go to um, Sister Diane's house, Lord, just be with us during the, be with her during this time. Give her strength um, just to pray, Lord, to lift up her hands, Lord, during this time of just pain and hurtness, God. Let's, uh, just help us to be a church, the family, Lord, to be there for one another, God. Give us the strength, Lord, despite the pain, the hurt, God. Remind us, Lord, encourage us, God, in your son Jesus Christ's name, amen. See you guys at Diane's house. 